are underway at Nissan Stadium. What a throw! What a catch! As Tennessee is rolling over Kansas City! This week on Titans All Access, a monster mash. It's no trick. The Titans treated their fans to two wins in six days against two of the AFC's elite teams. General Manager John Robinson stops by with his take. And toppins a pint. Hear ye, hear ye. King Henry is having himself quite the year. The King's Count will tell you everything you need to know. The Titans took care of the Colts at Nissan Stadium in September. Do you remember? Don't worry, we've got a recap that'll set the stage for Sunday's showdown. And this week's Nissan Insider features a conversation with our QB1. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry. Sacks! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to Titans All Access with General Manager John Robinson. I'm Mike Keith, and we're talking ball to open the show, presented by Duncan. We did this after the Buffalo game, so we figured we better do it after the Kansas City game, too. You're you're opening the program because the Titans had a big victory and opened hot on offense. What keyed that fast start? Yeah, Mike, I mean, we started with tempo. You know, we came out of the gate. We talked about it all week, wanting to start fast. So we went no huddle and we got into the run game, got into the pass game. You know, it's all about getting that first first down. Once you got the first first down, then the play sheet's wide open. O-line did a great job of making holes. Derek did a great job running. Ryan surveying, finding the open guy. Guys making plays. Uh, It was a really impressive drive to start the football game and one that we had talked about all week. The Titans scored on their first five possessions of the ball game. Great job by the offense. Defense might have been even better, though. Fantastic performance. When you watch the tape, what jumped out to you? I think it was the execution of the details within the calls. You know, we talked about all week. You know, if it's zone coverage, make sure you're closing those throw lanes because that's one thing that, that Mahomes really likes to do is find those windows that open up as guys come out of coverage. Secondary was disciplined. We were tight in man coverage, uh, which allowed our rush to kind of trigger and get after the quarterback. Uh, ended up with four sacks. And, and when they got down to the red zone, we really firmed up and, and kept them out. The Titans played all 48 guys who were active against the Chiefs. Seven Titans were appearing in their first game of the year for Tennessee. The Titans have really embraced the next man up concept. How has that become such an effective part of your culture? Well, I mean, I think that's something that we preach, you know, from from the start of training camp or when guys come in here. I mean, Bobby Hart got here on Tuesday and he ended up playing meaningful snaps for us. But if you're in the if you're in that meeting room, you know, if you're in that team room, you're going over the game plan, we're talking through, you know, what it's going to look like on Sunday. Whether you're on the active roster or on the practice squad, you better be ready to play, you know, both mentally and physically. And everybody in that room had a great week of practice, and it showed on Sunday. Not once this year have your five starters in the offensive line played every snap in a game. You've had to go to backups in every contest, and yet the offensive line has continued to improve. Have you done it? Well, I mean, I think it starts with the coaching staff. Those guys do a great job. Uh, with that group, Keith Carter, Mike Sullivan, Hossie, you know, really focusing on and preaching the details, the techniques, the fundamentals of offensive line play. This group's played together for a while, so they know each other well, they hold each other accountable, and they know that if they, you know, if they mess up on a, a block or they may not chip this guy or that somebody's right beside them and it's gonna pick up their slack and help them out. So it's a really tight-knit group and one that we're gonna continue to lean on down the stretch. The Titans are plus five in turnover ratio in the month of October after being minus six in September. Is that the most tangible reason for this football team's improvement? Well, it certainly plays a part in it, Mike. Anytime you can get the ball back for the offense, certainly bodes well for the outcome of the game. Uh, But that's one of the things that we've, you know, we've really preached. You can watch when you're watching around the league, you're watching other games, techniques and things that, that teams are doing to get the ball out and or take care of it offensively. So we've implemented a lot of stuff throughout the course of practice to create ball disruption when we're on defense to try to get the ball and conversely ball security throughout the course of the practice for offense, you know, to make sure that we're taking care of the football. So we got to continue to preach that as we will because it's paying dividends for us. Headed to Indianapolis this weekend, second meeting with the Colts in the last five weeks. Where do you see the biggest differences or improvements in Indianapolis 
right now from when you saw them back on September 26th? Yeah, they've been, I mean, they're really starting to string some wins together. They've won two in a row now. You know, they, they've got a, a talented backfield. This Taylor is, is really running hard. Wentz looks more comfortable. You know, he's getting more familiar. They're getting some guys back on that line to help protect and, and carve out, you know, holes for, for Taylor and Hines and those guys to run. You know, Mo Ali Cox has, has been a target for, for Wentz. And defensively, they're turning the football over. You know, they're, I think they're plus nine in the turnover margin, second in the league. They're a really disciplined football team. I think they've got the fourth fewest penalties of any team in the league. So that's a testament to Coach Reich and the way that they're doing things. But you can tell they're starting to get a little bit of confidence in the way you watch them play. What are the challenges of playing the Colts at Lucas Oil Stadium? Yeah, anytime you got a road game and, you know, more specifically a division game, a coming off a game a couple weeks ago that's fresh in both of our minds, it's always tough. You know, their fans are going to be loud at home, you know, wanting, wanting to get a, a division win. So we'll have to put a game plan in, in place and, and go out and execute it well on Sunday to win. Good place to be, though. That's it. Here we go. Talking ball with John Robinson presented by Duncan here on Titans All Access. When we come back, I'm going to head over to the Bet MGM studio and join Amy Wells. We got a lot more of the show coming up. In the shotgun, Mahomes with 7-10 to go first quarter. Titans 7, Chiefs nothing. Ball right at midfield. Mahomes dropping under pressure. Hit, sack, lost the ball. The Chiefs get back on it, but it's Bud Dupree. Titans with six defensive backs in the game. Here's the pressure up the middle. Sack! Oh. Danico oh. Andre! Oh. We welcome you back to Titans All Access. I ran over from St. Thomas Sports Park here to the Bet MGM studio. You look good for running. I, I know. I catch my breath here as we move on with the program. Titans, of course, coming off six days of big victories. Monday night football against Buffalo and then dominating Kansas City. We just visited with John Robinson about that. Pretty good six days of ball for the Titans. It's been a great six days of ball for the Titans, but Mike, you've been around a little bit. I've got to ask, how does this compare? Have there ever been stretches like this before? This seems pretty incredible. It was pretty amazing. I would compare it to one that our friend Rhett Bryan brought up with us on the radio the other day, and that was 2002. Uh, the Titans were able to win a game over the Indianapolis Colts, which was a big game in the AFC South, and then come back and play Monday night football next against the New England Patriots and Tom Brady, and they won that game 24 to seven. So beating Indy with Peyton Manning and New England with Tom Brady in back-to-back -back games, pretty good in and of itself. This pretty good as well. Absolutely. And a lot of good football from a lot of Titans right now, including Derek Henry. Titans offset the eye to the right. Now going in motion, Tannehill. Direct snap, Henry. He throws in the end zone. Man is wide open. Caught. Touchdown, Titans. Michael Pruitt. The Titans go to the King Cat. And the King has thrown for a big six. You want to take a look at some Derek Henry numbers? Yes, please. We call this the King's Count because Titans fans everywhere keeping up with the count. Amy Wells, you read the numbers, please. Now, the first number that we have here is 869. That's how many yards that Derrick Henry has rushed for so far in seven games in the 2021 season. 290. That is how many yards he leads the number two man in the NFL, Jonathan Taylor, in terms of rushing in the NFL standings right now. Derrick Henry at 869, Jonathan Taylor at 579. Of course, he plays for the Colts. So this weekend is a battle of the number one rusher and number two rusher in the league. Now, what about 131? Well, that's pretty easy from the standpoint. That's how many yards Derrick Henry needs to get to 1,000 yards, which would be the fourth straight season that he's done that. He would be the fourth back in franchise history to do it, joining Earl Campbell, Eddie George, and Chris Johnson. Now this last one's my favorite, 25. What is the significance of 25? Derrick Henry has rushed for more yards so far in 2021 on his own than 25 NFL teams. <laughs> That's how effective he has been on the ground this year and the offensive line and the tight ends, all the Titans in helping Derrick Henry. He has rushed for more than 80% of the league's teams. That's pretty incredible. That's 
pretty remarkable, undoubtedly. Well, Mike, I know you love talking about numbers. You know what I love? What? Your keys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we're You're gonna so have kind. we're gonna have those coming up a little bit later. But you know what else we need to do is we need to relive the first time the Titans took on the Indianapolis Colts before they take them on the second time. So we're going to have that. We're going to relive the magic on the other side of this break. Stay tuned for more Titans All Access. This Bud's for you. A seven-yard sack by Bud Dupree, that is. Here's Dave McGinnis to break it down. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. First quarter, third and seven at the 50-yard line, three by one. This is 11 personnel, three wides to one side, one tight end to the other. Titans are in man-to-man. This is a four-man rush. Look at the four-man rush. Watch Bud Dupree over here to the defense's right side. Takes off on a speed rush. He's standing up from a two-point, two-hand swipe, and then does a tremendous job of getting into a bicycle lane, left foot pointed towards the launch point of the quarterback, reaches with his arm, is able to get to Mahomes, pull him down, huge sack on third down. Titans' defensive rush was excellent all day. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Titans and the Colts this Sunday in Indianapolis, a battle in the AFC South. Titans currently 2-0 in AFC South games. The Colts are 1-1. One and, one. and you know where they got that one loss. It was the Tennessee Titans. And in case you've forgotten what that game was like, I'm here to remind you. I'm here to help. Check it out. The Titans outplayed the Colts in the first half, but led only 14-10 because of two turnovers. Indianapolis had a great third quarter drive coming away with a 28 yard field goal. Tennessee led 14 13 heading into the fourth quarter. The Titans mounted a drive that started at their own 41 yard line. Four plays later, the Titans were at the Indy 10. Tannehill looking, firing, complete to McNichols at the five. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Jeremy McNichols, touchdown, Titans. Tannehill. Gibbs, Henry, he's in there! Two for double two! And the Titans have a two-score lead! The Titans led 22-13, to but could not enjoy their two-possession advantage. The Colts quickly drove to the Tennessee six, where the drive stalled. A third Indianapolis field goal pulled the Colts back within six. So it was all on the line for the Titans at this moment, and Ryan Tannehill and the Titans offense came through. 14 plays, 67 yards, and over seven minutes off the clock to put the game away. Randy Bullock nails a 32-yard field goal, and we've got our final. Tennessee 25, Indianapolis 16. Tannehill threw for 197 yards and three touchdowns. Derrick Henry rushed 28 times for 113 yards and caught three passes for 31 yards. Ola Daney led the Titans' defensive effort with one and a half sacks. In the end, Tennessee was a minus three in turnover ratio, but gained 103 yards more than Indianapolis and played better third down and red zone defense. It wasn't pretty, but it was an AFC South win for the Titans on September 26 at Nissan Stadium. Going to be a fun matchup this Sunday at Lucas Oil Stadium. Remember, kickoff is noon central time, Titans and the Colts. You know what else is fun? What? Talking to quarterback Ryan Tannehill. Amy Wells did that, and we'll have him in our Nissan Insider coming up next on Titans All Access. What's good, Tennessee? It's hard to say we're clocking in because we never stop. Let's go to work. We will too. Tighten up. They say practice makes perfect. The tip drill is something the Titans practice every week. David Long and Rashawn Evans perfected it on Sunday. Coach Max back to show you how it happened. It's second and 10. We've got a spread formation. It's a four man rush again. And again, now we're in an excellent, excellent zone defense. 
Watch David Long. Watch his ability to carry. As he moves the front, watch him start to carry, makes a man turn, carries the crosser, does a tremendous job of getting his hand in the basket. And this is a great example of team defense. Watch for John Evans. What you gotta do if you're playing excellent defense, the National Football League, everybody has to race to the ball. This is a prime example of everybody turning, racing to the football. Watch this effort. Great job by David Long. And then the effort, the ability to get your hands underneath this ball, huge play by the Titans defense. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill has thrown for over 1,700 yards and seven touchdowns so far this year. He's run for three more touchdowns. Most importantly, he's led the Titans to a five and two start. Ryan Tannehill is a really good quarterback. He's an even better guy, as you'll see in this week's Nissan Insider with Amy Wells. You've been in Nashville for a while now. This is your third season. Is this place starting to feel like home a little bit? It is, it is. You know, the longer we're here, the more you really settle in, right? We have, our, our kids are in school, have friends outside of the facility, the, the game, and uh, it's really just a great city. So we're enjoying being here and hopefully we can stay. You guys were so involved in the community in Florida. You've brought that here a little bit. I know for you and your wife, that's kind of a cornerstone of what you do is getting involved and giving back, correct? Yeah, it's huge. You know, for us to be able to give back is, is such a blessing. You know, it's something that was important to us, you know, as soon as we, we got into the NFL is, you know, God's given us this platform, this position, let's be able to use it. So whether it's local charities or, or getting involved in, in friends that have charity events and, and supporting those has been really fun for us and exciting because we've gotten to know some, some new people here in Nashville, some new charities that are doing really cool work. So it's been a lot of fun. Do you enjoy getting your kids involved? They're getting a little bit older now. So bringing them along to different charitable events that you might be participating in, showing them, teaching them that, um, is that something that excites you? Yeah, no doubt. You know, if they're a little, still a little young, but anytime we can, can put them in a position to, to see giving, to see caring, to see empathy, to see love, uh, it's definitely things that we want to teach our kids. So it's important. When you're younger and you're thinking about having kids and building a family, do you think about what that looks like as it relates to being an NFL player? Do you think about the two or are they two separate things? Like your kids are kind of growing up in this NFL world. Yeah, it's a different world than I grew up in, no doubt about it, but it's a world that, that we live in. So we just try to do the best we can in, in raising them the right way, instilling morals and values that we believe are important. You know, just teach them to love people and, and treat people the right way. And it's cool they get to watch their dad play on Sundays, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I would have loved it when I was a kid. I don't know if, uh, if they really care or not, but uh, uh, I think they have fun with it. As they watch you go through this chapter of your life, this NFL chapter, because obviously it doesn't last forever, what do you hope they take away from this experience and watching you do this? I hope they take away that you know hard work is important, that, that working uh, towards your goals, towards your dreams is, is very important. Being able to fight through adversity, and good things and bad things that, that, that come up, you know, being consistent through all of that, you know, so. No matter where they're at in life, what they end up doing, they can apply those lessons, hopefully, into whatever they end up doing. Do we get another slate or something? How does this work? <laughs> Lucky to have Ryan Tannehill as a part of this football team. When we come back, the keys to winning over the Indianapolis Colts, that's when Titans All Access resumes next. You've heard of the Grand old Opry, but we want to introduce you to the Grand old Autry. Dave McGinnis gives us his take on Danico's dominance. Third play we're going to look at is the third and 11 plus in the Tennessee 29. As we take a look at this, this is going to be another sack but by Danico Autry, who's been playing excellent football for the Titans. Excellent production since he's been here. Watch his four-man rush. Look at the spread. Look at the front that they are running here. But watch Danico. This is a power rush. Watch this bull rush over the guard. Tremendous power rush over the guard. Watch the get off, dips his shoulder, tremendous dip, good power, gets right back on top of the quarterback. The defensive front, the four man pressure was excellent all day. These are three great examples of how this defense kept Patrick Mahomes and the high powered Kansas City Chiefs offense to three points for an entire game. What a performance. It's been a lot of good stuff on Titans All Access today, but 
It's time for the best part of the show. Mike keeps keys. Hit us with the first one. Big play AJ. Arthur Juan Brown playing good football right now. Good against Buffalo, even better against Kansas City. Needs to be really good in this game against Indianapolis. Run after the catch. Possibilities are there because you know they're going to set out to stop Derrick Henry. Big play AJ needs to show up at Lucas Oil Stadium. All right, what's key number two? Take care of the football. Colts have 16 takeaways, and they are fantastic at knocking the ball out in situations where you're running after a catch or when you get beyond the line of scrimmage. They'll make plays anywhere on the field, even if you've just had a nice game. You've got to make sure you know where the defenders are, the football is secured, you got to take care of the football against this opportunistic Colts defense. All right, the final key. Secondary's got to hold up. A big game for Kevin Byard and company, undoubtedly. Still have injuries. Carson Wentz has 11 touchdown passes, just one interception on the season. Michael Pittman Jr. is a really good wide receiver. They have other weapons like T.Y. Hilton, the veteran, and sort of on and on and on. Overall, the Titans secondary has got to play really good, consistent football like they did against Kansas City. Not going to be an easy thing to do because the Colts can throw it. Those are good keys. Thank you. I feel good about this one. And one key is listening to Titans Radio, 11 a.m. Central Time. This lady, Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan, have Titans Countdown kickoff shortly after noon Central Time. Titans and the Colts in a showdown. Yes. On Halloween at Lucas Oil Stadium in the AFC South. For Amy, I'm Mike. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.